as Dixon falls to the ground, but goes in the left side, layup, and just rims out, and nice recovery though by Prairie State and Danielle Zandra. She gives it back out to Mayweather at the right wing. That was a good rebound for her to pick it up, help save the, save the momentum for a team on this end of the court. Passing it now inside to Danielle Zandra. As nicely as Nigel Dixon recovers the loose ball. Dixon now at the left wing. Gives it inside to Zandra. Zandra, nice move, spin moves inside, kicks it back out to Green. Green back inside to Zandra. In the paint, no call for a foul. Stolen away there by Bridget Nemec. Pass it up court, Kelly Foley, breakaway left side off the glass and in. I wonder if Zandra, if, she, if she's injured or anything, because she didn't have any lift on that shot down here on that end. I wonder if she's injured. Time out there by Prairie State. Here again here on SportsTownChicago.com. Covering Marine Valley College basketball. Doesn't really get any better than that. We have the girls basketball game right now. And coming up at around 7, 7, 15 or so, we're going to have the guys taking on Prairie State. And the guys are impressive in themselves, too. They're 23-5 and five overall and 10-2 and two in conference play. Yeah, you know, and last last week, Moraine Valley, they were playing Elgin. And those guys, the Moraine Valley put up some big numbers. They doubled up 104-57 to 57 on Elgin. Woo. So let's see what happens this weekend. I, I mean, today, I tell you, they had four guards that were really impressive with John uh, Tay Shannon. Gerald Dorsey was one, uh, Markel Pierce, and Dave Williams. Dave Williams had a great game, I tell you. But not to mention that, Carrington, Kyle and, and Kyle and Carrington Ward, those boys had a good game, especially Carrington, 23 points, 11 rebounds. Impressive. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, if you can get that out of your player on any given night, take it. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you can't go wrong with that type of activity. You know, they had great team defense. Um, the, the coach kept the players coming in fresh, and it was impressive. But back to this game. As Prairie State comes in off the timeout, again, 7 nothing Moraine Valley Cyclones in favor of Prairie State right now, the Prairie State Pioneers. 15 minutes left to go here in the first half. Again, college basketball plays two 20-minute halves. And now bringing it up the floor is Mayweather now once again for Prairie State as we get back underway here. Well, let's see if they can get something going, some type of momentum, because um, Prairie State is having a tough time. They have yet to score. Zanstra goes inside, driving it in to Green, and we're going to have a foul on Moraine Valley, and the foul appears to be on number, I think we're going to, I think it's going to be on Renisha Dent. Oh, that's actually going to be on Bridget Nemec, my bad, and it's still a quick steal there by Stephanie Carr, giving it up the floor, Kelly Foley and has it stripped, and I believe we're going to have a late whistle, and it will go, ball was out of bounds, no foul call. It will stay with Moraine Valley. Inbounding it now is Renisha Dent. You know, the Pioneers, they're going to have to get something going on their end because uh, uh, they are still they still haven't scratched the scoreboard. Inbound to Stephanie Cross. She rounds it, rounds it around to the top of the key. Driving inside now. Kelly Foley has to try to kick it back out. Almost has stolen Ray. Covered nicely. Stephanie Cross thought about the long through. Driving in right side. Gives it off to number 12, Shanika Boy, but... Loses it, and we're going to have a foul against Boyd on the loose ball. Ball will go to Prairie State. And now bringing it to the floor for Prairie State is Latoy Mayweather. Mayweather gives it off now to Dixon. Dixon passes it now down to Shanara Jones. Jones back out to Dixon, swinging it out around to Merriweather at the top of the key. Dixon driving in middle, kicks it back out. And swinging it around to Mayweather, left wing for three, off the back rim, no good. Rebound there by Renisha Denton, Mar Moraine Valley. You know, that was some good ball movement by Prairie, by, uh, by the Pioneers. That's one thing I could say. They did have good ball movement. They just couldn't get knocked down the shot. Kelly Foley gets up to Carl at the top of the key. Carl trying to look inside, nowhere to go, gets it back out to Foley. Foley for three, no. Off the right side of the rim. Nice recovery and run there by Bridge and Nemec. And... Nicely way to recover, hitting it off the Prairie State player, keeping possession. Yeah, you know, it, it appears that the Cyclones might be a little bit faster than Prairie State that it appears. Maybe a little bit more athletic, I would say, even, um, from what it's showing at this point of the game. Then in Monson into Carl. 13.47 left to go here in the first half, 7 nothing Moraine Valley. Bully swinging it around. Left wing, Bridget Nemec, no good. Rebound there by Mandy Green. And Prairie State bringing up the floor now, Merriweather once again. Merriweather driving. Kicks it out now to Jones. Jones back out to Dixon, top of the key. Swinging it around now to Merriweather. Looking inside to Zandra. Zandra left side layup, no good. Rebound by Dent. 
she has no lift. I, uh, I, I wonder if she's injured. Look at how she's running. Um, with her height, I thought she would have had a better opportunity to score the ball at that position. Carl back to Den at the right wing. Then trying to look inside, gives it back out in the corner to Shanika Boyd. Boyd driving in right side. Layup blocked away there by Danielle Zandra. And driving up now is Nigel Dixon with the nice move and one. That's a good way to get on the scoreboard. Uh, going, driving hard to the basket and with the possibility of getting a three-point play. So a quick way to start there to get some points at least for Prairie State. And actually... I believe we're going to have an, it was an offensive foul. They are not counting the basket. They are not counting the basket. I did not see the foul, but that, but life goes on, I guess, is uh, what? Moraine Valley will go back in now, inbounding it now to Dent, and throwing out the floor is Stephanie Carr at the top of the key. Dent. Dent at the top of the key, gives it off now the right wing to Carl. Carl. Carl on the right wing corner, driving out way out to Kelly Foley, and that's going to be tipped by a Prairie State player going towards the scoreboard. Ball will stay with Moraine Valley. Now still 7-0 Moraine Valley, 12.36 left to go here in the first half. Foley, dumping it off to Carl. Shot clock's at two, and a way off three-point as we're going to have the shot clock violation. Ball will go back to Prairie State now, who is still down seven with 12.30 left here in the first half. Well, let's see if Prairie, Prairie State can get on the board. Merriweather. Back out to the top of the key, out now to Jones. Jones trying to look inside. She does in the den. Kicks it back out. Dixon, le left wing and good. And that's going to be the money ball, 4-3. And now Prairie State trying to apply a little bit of full court pressure here. As Carl now trying to find somewhere to go with it, gets it up to Den, who barely gets it across this time. Off to Bridget Nemec, driving inside. Pass was deflected away by Mary, where the ball will stay with the Cyclones of Moraine Valley. Yeah, the Pioneers was able to put some pressure, get their hands on that ball, cause a deflection, kind of stop the momentum that um, Cyclones have. Inbound in it now for Moraine Valley, who just checked in, Maggie Yandel. Yandel kicks it back out to Carl, now the top of the key after the inbound pass. Carl back to Foley. Foley trying to call for a screen, but just dumps it off to Carl, who swings back to the top of the key. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Foley for three. Right wing. In and out. Rebound there by Nemec here at the bottom. Off the left rim. No good. Gets her own rebound and is going to be fouled there by number 21, Mandy Green of Prairie State. Still 7-3. Moraine Valley, 11-41 left to go here in the first half. As Nemec will go to the line for two shots now. Nemec had great position in there in the block. Able to use her body to get that rebound and, and go back up for it. Nemec unable to make her free throw, so that's 0 for 3 right away to start off here for Moraine Valley at the free throw line. As now Nemec resets, goes up for her second free throw, takes one dribble, puts it up, and no good. So four straight misses at the free throw line for Moraine Valley as Prairie State trying to charge back here. Down 4, 7, 3, 11, 35 left to go here in the first half. Merriweather kicks it inside, out to Green. Green out, loses her dribble, has to take it back out in the right wing. Guarded heavily there by Dent, who eventually gets it out to Merriweather. Good defense there by Moraine Valley. And going inside now to Amanda Pierce. Pierce with a nice hook around and gets the friendly rolling in. Nice, nice move by Pierce in the post. 7-5 now, Moraine Valley, 11-10 left to go here in the first half. Foley trying to find someone to go with it. Gets it up to Stephanie Carr, who chucks it down court. Getting it over the half court line is Dixon. Dixon with the running layup off the right side, off the glass, and in 9-5. Bringing it up now, Mayweather once again for Prairie State. Mayweather dumps it off now. Two in the corner is number 22, Nigel Dixon. Dixon, nice pass inside. Layup missed, though, by Pierce. Ball goes out of bounds, stays with Prairie State. You know, Amanda Pierce is getting the ball right, right where she wants. It looks like she's going to be very aggressive in this game. I look for her to be a big scorer here. Let's see what she can do. Inbounding it now for Prairie State. Just, in, just checking in is Kawani Garnett, number 32, the 5'9 guard from Champaign Central High School. Nice pass inside. Rolls around for Mandy Green. The first-year player from Homewood Flossmoor gets the layup. Well, you see the Pioneers now. They're coming on to the Cyclones. The score is 7-9. They're Little making mi their move. miscommunication by Marine Valley as they try to get across court, and they do eventually up to Dana Hamid, who just checks back in 
for Moraine Valley as well. And it's going to be a traveling call against Moraine Valley and Maggie Yandel, the 5'8 guard from Stag High School. You know, Prairie State is putting on that defense, tighten it up. Let's see if they could um, continue to put pressure on the Cyclones. Latoy Mayweather bringing it up now for Prairie State. Ball almost stolen away there. Going inside now to Pierce. Going Pierce. Back. And we're going to have a foul on Moraine Valley. Looks like it's going to be on number number 23, Katie McGann. Just checking in for Moraine Valley. I think uh, Coach Boyd realized that he has a special piece with Amanda Pierce along the block and that he's starting to utilize her down in that post because she could do damage. She's so tall. She could she can get it done here to this evening. Off the loose ball, Prairie State ball. Going out to Merriweather. Merriweather gets it back out in the corner. Ollie thought about going in. Or excuse me, that was Kawana Garnack bringing it up fast break. We got three on two. Off the layup, and she's going to be fouled. And person going to be fouled was number 23, Katie McGann, who will go to the line for two shots. You know, it's interesting to see how this how it's starting to change in this game. The momentum. Remember, Marine Valley had a 7-0 lead here. Start the game as McGann goes up and makes her free throw. So it is now 10-7, Marine Valley, 10 minutes. One second left to go here in the first half here on SportstownChicago.com. Ryan Fade, Landon Woodard's on the call. So that's one for five now for Moraine Valley. Looking to make a two for six, and Katie McGann does. So the all two free throws for Moraine Valley have been made by Katie McGann. Katie McGann had a nice stroke on that shot there. Nice release, nice follow through. Jones gets it inside to Pierce. Pierce going up to Zandra, who is going to be fouled, going up for the shot. Foul on Moraine Valley and Maggie Yandel. Uh, Coach Boyd over there, he, he see he did something different. He's trying to use some his height. He put um, Zandra in with Pierce, and I guess he's going to try to use his twin towers to get back and take control of this game. Let's <laughs> see how towers, it turns now, out. Yeah. <laughs> up now for the free throw, Zandra up and good. 11-8 now, Moraine Valley, 9.52 left to go here in the first half. And stick around after this game. We're going to have boys basketball here between Prairie State and Moraine Valley coming up here right after this game. And missing the second free throw is Zandra, rebound by Moraine Valley and Dana Hamid. Bringing it up the floor now, Stephanie Carl. Carl to McGann. McGann inside to Nemec, left side, and good for the layup, and one. Nemec driving to the basket. She, she actually beat Amanda Pierce to the point and got it up off that glass. And, then you know, it, it's nice when you can use the backboard. It helps you out. And leading to the end, 113-8 on Moraine Valley. 9.42 left to go here in the first half. Up Nemec for the end, one. No good rebound there by Prairie State and Danielle Zandra. Bringing it up the floor now, Kawani Garnett. Let's see if they're going to try to work it back into the post. I Mayweather think. in the right corner. There we go, back into the post, see? Trying you to dump it inside to Zandra and Landon, you called it. Ball goes off, and Moraine Valley player, ball will stay with Prairie State. Yeah, they have something special here. I see the size difference in the two, um, Zandra and Pierce. They're both standing 6'1". These young ladies can make a difference in the game if they're utilized properly. Inbound in and out for Prairie State is Garnett. Getting it back out to Mayweather near midcourt. In the corner, Garnett trying to drive, kicks it inside for the layup to Amanda Pierce off the right side of the glass and in 13-10 Moraine Valley. I, I, I tell you, um, I'm looking for Amanda Pierce to have a big game. If, if she doesn't get in the 20s, they don't win. Driving right side and up, blocked there off Maggie Yandel, but she gets, the, <laughs> puts the put back up and in. 15-10 now Moraine Valley, bringing it up the floor, Merriweather. To Garnett, the left wing. Thought about the three, gives it off now. Inside to Pierce. Pierce driving in, left side, and good off the layup. The aggressiveness there by Amanda Pierce getting it done. Amanda Pierce, uh, she's getting warm. She's, she's starting to feel and get control of this game. And you know what, guys? It's starting to pan out to be a good game here. Let's see what the Cyclones can do. Almost turnover there by Murray Valley. Getting it out now to Stephanie Carr, the right wing. In the right corner, Nemec, long two. No good, but gets her own rebound. Good hustle there by Nemec. She was quicker Left to the Left wing for three. Katie McGann missing. Rebound there by Jones. Garnett bringing it up the floor now for Prairie State. Inside to Zandra. Left side off the glass and one. You know what? This is getting exciting. Yes, it is. This is getting very exciting here, guys. I, I tell you, couldn't be at a better, better day to be inside. It's so cold outside. And to be inside to witness these young ladies playing hard like this, good night. 
15-14 now, Moraine Valley, 8.22 left to go here in the first half. At the line now, Zandra for her and one free throw attempt off the layup and the foul. Free throw is up and off the front of the rim. No good rebound there by Amber Hunter, the six-foot center from Evergreen Park High School. You know what's interesting? I'm going to. I'm wondering if uh, Coach Jones is going to try to uh, match Coach Boyd, Boyd in terms of matching with the size. McGann left wing corner for three ribs in and out, and it went off of Shanika Boyd. Ball will go to Prairie State. You know what? Jeff Boyd took. Um, Amanda Pierce out the game. I, I, I would not have done that. I would have played her a little longer because she's hot. You don't want to sit her when she's starting to catch her groove. That, right now the score is 15-14. You want to try to take control of this game. Garnett now bringing it up the floor at the top of the key, going around. I'm trying to switch it out to number 25, Shanara Jones. Jones now to Dixon. Back out to Jones. It goes to Garnett at the top of the key. Back out to Jones. Right wing. 4-3. No good. Rebound there by Danae Hamid and, and Moraine Valley. Not a bad shot by Jones. Just a little bit hard off the back of the iron. But you know what? They're, they're starting to smell something here. Let's see what happens. Stephanie Carr now at the top of the key. Thought about passing, but decides to hold on to it. Dribble drive, left wing corner. And Katie McGann missed the three. And the save attempt there is successful by Dana Hamid. Good hustle there by Hamid and Moraine Valley. 15-14, 17-20, 7-20, I should say, left in the first half. And saving it again is Dana Hamid. Impressive hustle there by Moraine Valley and Dana Hamid. Stephanie Carl top of the key gives it off now to Shanika Boyd. A lot of fast pace action now. Off the steal there is number 22, Nigel Dixon. Driving inside is Garnett. Ooh. Layup and good. <laughs> Nothing but net. <laughs> Flying through the defenders Ooh. and getting the two points. 16 15 Prairie State with his first lead of the game. Turnover right away by Garnett. Inside to Jones and stolen away by Moraine. No, not stolen away by Moraine Valley. Off to Prairie State and Dixon. Dixon throwing it out into the left wing corner to Jones. Inside to Zandra. Zandra turns around. Hook shot. No good. Rebound up and is fouled is Faith Folks from Thorn Ridge High School going to the line now for two. Fast paced action here in the last minute, Landon. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I'm out of breath already now. <laughs> <laughs> but so much fun. I mean, it's worth getting out of breath for. These young ladies are playing hard and they're playing tough ball. Couldn't ask for a better night of activity. And a quick timeout here, I believe it will go to Moraine Valley. We'll take a short break and be back here on SportsTownChicago.com. You love sports, you have drive and determination, but you need skills to work in sports broadcasting. Hey, this is Tom Waddle, and I'm here to tell you how to get those skills at the Illinois Center for Broadcasting. Get hands-on training for a career in radio, TV, or digital media. Learn to be a host, producer, or shoot and edit video. With internships, day and night classes, affordable tuition, and job placement assistance, you can start a new career in less than a year at the Illinois Center for Broadcasting. Go to beonair.com slash Chicago Sports to put the ball in play. That's beyondair.com slash Chicago Sports. Hi, it's Dave Jude. If you'd love a career in sports, check out the Illinois Center for Broadcasting. Go to beyondair.com slash Chicago Sports or text Chicago Sports to 33239. The Illinois Center for Broadcasting trains you for on-air and behind the scenes in radio, TV, and web with internships, financial aid for those who qualify, and job placement. Start your career in less than a year. Check out exciting sports careers at the Illinois Center for Broadcasting. Go to beyondair.com slash Chicago Sports sports or text Chicago sports to 33239. How to play tennis with a baseball bat. What the deuce? I'm Hulk Hogan. Did he used to play football when he was in high school? Yes, quite the female golfer. <laughs> Sportstownchicago.com. It's all fun and games. ChicagolandSportsRadio.com is now the home of Loyola University men's and women's soccer for each and every goal scored by the Ramblers this fall. Yeah. Tune into ChicagolandSportsRadio.com for the live broadcast and all the free down. Welcome back here on SportsTownChicago.com. Faith folks at the free throw line missing her first free throw here at Moraine Valley as they take on Prairie State. 16-15 Prairie State leads with 6.38 left to go here in the first half. Ryan Faye, Landon Woodard's on the call. And we'll be on the call for the boys game too later on tonight, 7 oh. o'clock or so. Oh, yeah, Ryan, I'm looking forward to it. And making the second free throw was folks. Now bringing it up the floor now, Stephanie Carr, who has to go around as Prairie State trying to apply some pressure in the backcourt. Carl trying to find somewhere to go with it, still stuck in the backcourt. Still trying to find somebody, but eventually Katie McGinn comes up, gives it back up to Carl now. And Carl gives it inside 
to Hunter who misses, rebound by Zandra. Zandra now bringing it up the floor, and now to Mary Mother who charges up in the middle. Floater up, and no good rebound there by Shanika Boyd. Boyd now bringing it up the right side. As Carl now at the top of the key, waiting, trying to find somewhere to go with it, slowly trying to drive it in. Gets back out now to Shanika Boyd. Boyd going cross court to McGinn. At the left wing, back out to Carl, now to McGinn. Corner, three, nails it! That was a nice shot. <laughs> Indeed, all nothing but net there. 18-17, Moraine Valley. Dixon now at the left wing. Gives it back on top of the key, stolen away by Keaton again. It's only her in the hoop. Right side misses the layup though, but a rebound by Stephanie Carl from behind. You, you now out to Boyd, getting inside. And up and good is McKinn from the right corner now. Long two, up and good, 2017 Moraine Valley. Uh, McKinn is on a light little, uh, little run on a for herself. She just scored five straight points. Ball now goes up to Boyd. Boyd now gives it up to Merriweather, left wing. Boyd driving in nicely. Nice moves. Missed the rebound. Up and no good there by Faith, folks. Rebound by Moraine Valley and Bridget Nemec. Oh, excuse me, that was Amber Hunter. Now giving up the ball now to Stephanie Carl. 5.05, let's go here in the first half. 2017, Moraine Valley. Carl gets it out to McGann. Thought about the three. She got the hot hand, but gives it off back to Carl. Carl to Boyd, right wing. Going inside, nice pass out to Dana Hamad. Gives it back up to Carl. Top of the key, Carl drives in. Pull up, off the backboard, no good. Rebound there by Hunter. Going up for the layup, and she is fouled. Foul will be against Prairie State and Faith Folks. You know... Faith, folks, is a is a nice size forward, but I don't know what Coach Boyd is thinking. If I have a player of the magnitude of Amanda Pierce, I'm going to have her on the floor with Danielle Zanstra because of their height, the way that they flow in while they were playing. And here she comes. He must have heard you me called speaking it. <laughs> because they had nice rhythm, you know. And Ryan, when you have somebody with not, if you're playing with a rhythm, you don't want to mess that up. And that's a no, perfect don't. example. Let's see what happens now. I think they're going to go on a run. Hunter missed her first through the ball, makes her second. Now 21-17, Moraine Valley, 444 left to count here in the first half. Merriweather brings it up now to Dixon's left wing. Let's see if they can work the ball back into the post to their, two, to the, to, to their twin towers that per Prairie State has. And here they go. Amanda Pierce goes up. And we're going to have another foul here against Moraine Valley. Looks like that will go against number 42, Daisha Hawkins. You know, I like the move. I like now what the coach Jeff Boyd is doing for, for the Pioneers, you know. As Nemec checks back in for Hunter. And at the line now for Prairie State is Amanda Pierce going up for two free throws, down four, 21-17, 4.32 left to go here in the first half. Both teams in the bonus now. Making the first one up and good, 21-18 now, Moraine Valley, 4.32 left to go here in the first. That was a nice, nice shot. Again, we are live here on SportsTownChicago.com and ChicagolandSportsRadio.com, so that means it doesn't get any better. Pierce now up for the second free throw, up and no good rebound there by Nemec. You Nemec going to bring it up the floor now, giving it off to Carl. Although she oh, actually, that shot. she's going to drive it herself, getting it off to Keaton McGann. McGann thought about the three, gets back off to Carl. Back to McGann, left wing, three, M nails it. McGann has a nice little three-pointer, nice little shot. Well, she is wearing number 23, isn't she? And she's got 12 <laughs> points here in the first half. Jeez. Timeout. Prairie State, 24 18, Marine Valley, 4 14. Let's go here. We'll be back here on SportsCenterChicago.com. Welcome back here on SportsOnChicago.com. Inbounding to Prairie State. Going up for the shot was Amanda Pierce. And we're going to have a quick foul right away, and that's going to go against Moraine Valley and Bridget Nemec. And that is the team's eighth foul here in the first half. 24-18, Moraine Valley, 4-0-7. Let's go here in the first half. Well, if I was the coach. and the if, way that, if you were the coach. If I was the coach, right? 
and the way that Amanda Pierce shoots the ball, I would definitely ride her out. I would make sure that um, she would touch the ball every time down the court. Missing the second free throw, though. Rebound by Boyd, giving it up in the floor now for the Cyclones of Marine Valley. 24-19, four minutes left to go here in the first half. Boyd to Carl at the top of the key. Carl trying to instruct the offense here for a certain play. Carl, back to McGann. Inside, stolen away though by Mer Prairie State and Nigel Dixon. Dixon, floater, center, no good. Back of the rim, off and no good. Rebound there by Nemec. Bring it up the floor now, Stephanie Carl. When the team gets uh, a turnover like that, you want to try to capitalize on that Prairie State. You don't want to come up with a, a inside shot. Inside to Nemec, back out to McGann. Thought about the three, gets it back out to Carl, top of the key. Nice pass out though, left wing. In the corner, driving in his dent, has it stolen away. Amanda Pierce bringing up the floor to Merriweather. Two on two. Dixon, the floater no good. Rebound by, at, barely rebounded there by Moraine Valley and Stephanie Carl. You know, I, I, I would have said that Dixon needs to pull that ball back out. You have to let, let your, your tall girls get back down there and Zanstra and Pierce and work through them. Dent now at the left wing, gives it back out to Carl, top of the key. Carl driving in. Left side trying to get inside to Nemec. She does. Gets it back out to McGann. Ball was tipped and deflected. Out of bounds. Ball will stay with Moraine Valley. Quick substitutions now coming in. Maggie Yandel and Ashley Cunningham now checking in for Stephanie Carl and Shanika Boyd. Inbounding it now is McGann for Moraine Valley. Now at the top of the key is Cunningham. Cunningham now back out to Boyd. Cunningham, top of the key. Three off the left side of the rim. No good. Rebound by Zandra. Who gives it up to Meriwether driving in right side. And she pulls off, stops for a little bit. It's up to Jones, inside now to Zandra, right side. Zandra double teamed. And we're gonna have a reach and foul against Moraine Valley and number 21, Renisha Dent. I can sit here, Ryan, and, and say to you, I'm looking forward to the end of this game. <laughs> I want to see what's gonna happen because- You the want way, the game winning buzzer shot is what you want. Well, you know, I, what I want to see, I want to see Prairie State utilize their twin tower ladies that they have. I want to see them utilize these women. They have a nice shot, both of them. They have a nice stroke, and I think if he utilizes these girls, he can uh, win this ball game. Offensive rebound now by Jones, and the ball will go out of bounds off the missed free throw. Ball goes to Moraine Valley, 24-19 Moraine Valley, 2.31 left to go here in the first half. You know, Ryan, I, uh, I'm looking at this, uh, everybody on the court, and... Um, as we have a, sorry, sorry, Landon, quick substitution as Kelly Foley checks back in now for the, for Katie McGann, who had a very nice first half here, 12 points. I don't know if I would have took her out the game. I think she would have played almost the entire game. <laughs> <laughs> That's what every player wants. Driving it now, inside back out to Dent, now out to Kelly Foley. Foley now, swinging around, top of the key off to Cunningham. Cunningham trying to go inside, stolen away by Amanda Pierce and Prairie State, down five. 2.20 to go in the first half. Merriweather flies it inside, up for the floor to right side, and good is Shanera Jones. You know, they're starting to pick up the pace. Prairie State. 24-21 now, Moraine Valley, 2.06 and counting left to go here in the first half. Cunningham now. Again, nice, some nice pressure going through the legs. Somehow, oh, and a <laughs> aggressive play down there as the ball now goes up to Nemec, who goes up for the layup right side and is fouled. That looks like a makeup foul. Looks like he missed the other foul on the other end, right? <laughs> Possibly, yes. We're not here to judge. We're just here to call the game. I know, right? Minute 56 <laughs> up to go here in the first half. Still Moraine Valley up 24-21. Nemec at the line now. <laughs> Nemec up for the first shot. No good. Again, some struggling. I would say one of the main struggles for Moraine Valley is at the free throw line. Yeah, they're missing a lot of shots. Quick substitution now as Stephanie Carl checks back in for Ashley Cunningham. We will go back to the bench. And now here's Nemec for her second free throw attempt. is up and rolls in and good. 25-21 now, Moraine Valley. 156 up to go here in the first half. Quick pace here by Prairie State, bringing it up the floor back out to Merriweather at the top of the key. Merriweather trying to space everybody away. Gives it off now to Dixon, rotating around to Jones and gets it inside to Pierce, going up to Sandra. Ball overthrown, stolen away though by Kelly Floyd, off to Stephanie Carroll, driving in. Right side, layup, right side, missed off the right side of the room, no good, and... Good hustle there as Maggie Ando rolling, doing the pencil roll around the court. And the ball will now stay though 
with Moraine Valley as it was tipped off a Prairie State player. You know, Ryan, if Prairie State does not take control of this game, you're doing this last minute and a half, they won't win the game because they have all the chance, all the opportunity to bust this game wide open. Neiman driving to the left side. Look at that and block. And that's going to be a jump ball called. Good defense that, there by Amanda Pierce. And, and the ball, ball will go. Yep. you got to be kidding me, Ryan. Nope, that was a block. I thought they were going to call a travel at first, but they did call <laughs> a jump ball. Possession will go now to Prairie State. 25-21, Moraine Valley. Minute 20 left to go here in the first half. Bringing it up the floor now is Latoy Mary Merriweather. And from Maryville, Indiana, Maryville High School, is Merriweather from. Wow, that's a, a lot little, of Marys, isn't yeah, it, Ryan? Yeah, twister there. <laughs> I know, right? You did a great job, oh, though, Oh, thank Ryan. you. Did a great job. Trying to drive inside now as Jones gets it back out now to Garnett. Merriweather, top of the key. Trying to switch it around, she does. Going out to Dixon, right wing, one minute left to go here in the first half. Merriweather, circling around, driving in. And almost thrown away, Dixon off the glass, layup up and in, good. Now down two, 25-23, almost for the inbound steal. You know, Dixon got hit in the head, too, uh, when she got that basket going to the rim. She that stepped out of bounds of trying to save the ball. Moraine Valley will keep the ball with 47 and a half seconds left here in the first half, 25-23. Yeah, you see she's looking around, looking at the ref like, you missed the call, ref, I got knocked in my head. Carl now. Carl back out to Foley, trying to bring it up the floor. Foley now inside to Yandel. Yandel kicks it back out to Nemec. Long two, no good. Rebound by Merriweather. Bringing it up the floor fast. Now off to Jones. Jones, floater, rolls off, no good. Rebound by Dixon, stolen away though by Nemec. 27 seconds, still 25-23, Marine Valley. Carl, flying over cross court. <laughs> Kelly Foley couldn't hold on to it. This is a lot of activity. And a more activity. Travel Carl here against Prairie State. <laughs> and number 35, Faith Folks from Thorn Ridge High School. That and was a lot going on there, Ryan, wasn't it? Katie McGann checking back in now for the Cyclones as Maggie Yando goes back to the bench. That's a good substitution. That's a very good substitution. They, they need her in there for her nice uh, shot. She's a, a pretty accurate shooter. They need her on the floor. Shot clock's Katie been McGann. turned off as we have 17 seconds left to go here. 13 seconds, Carl, top of the key. Foley, long three, no good off the rim. Nemec with the rebound, going up for the layup. Right side, no good. McGann trying again, no call. Nemec turns around, left side, no good. And ball, ball's going everywhere. And the clock will run out and expire. No shot will be given. No fouls have been called. 25-23 at the end of the first half. Moraine Valley has the slight edge. You know, Ryan, Nemec had about three rebounds on that possession. <laughs> yes, she did. She's a workhorse. She is hitting the boards very very hard. First half ends here on an exciting note. We'll be back here for second half action between Prairie State and Marine Valley here on Chicago Land Sports Radio and SportstownChicago.com. on the BS zone, Brian recalled the first date. She hit you over the head with a Louisville slugger. No, she tried to put her finger in my butt. And Steven babbled incoherently. I'm just getting over a hip injury and I end up twisting my knee. Then I rode a bike back from Montrose Beach to Park Ridge. I'm going to map that out. It's about 12 miles. That's the BS zone on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. on ChicagolandSportsRadio.com. When you turn into Bleacher Talk, sometimes things don't go as we planned. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what to say. Bored. If you want to give us a call, give us a call. The other at the other side on the other side of the fence, the guys that you kind of expected to be decent haven't been decent. Sometimes we say things that might offend. Yeah, You're just racist for even saying that. <laughs> he's not white. Let me oh, he's an idiot. It. That's another he is favorite. so stupid. Sometimes we make sexual innuendos. Maybe half in? <laughs> no. <laughs> You're all the way in or not in at all. They're keeping him fresh, you know what I mean? He's not big. He's just not girthy enough. It gets enough. hard after a while. Oh, yes. 
sentence, please. I just didn't want you to finish, that's all. And sometimes we just show our sheer brilliance. Just came up with an idea for to attract more attendance at U.S. Cellular Field. Free churros. Oh, I was thinking strippers. Yeah, Tom Ricketts. But here on Bleacher Talk, we promise to inform and entertain. So tune in Mondays at 2 p.m. for Bleacher Talk Radio on SportstownChicago.com. Are you ready for it? I'm ready. It's coming. Hey, this is Davis, one half of the D and Davis Radio Show. You can find us on ChicagolandSportsRadio.com from 11 to 1. If you want to have a little fun, cover all the bases, cover all the sports. Hey, we're going to talk about some things that have nothing to do with sports, but we're going to have a good time. Make sure you tune in. That's from 11. 11 to 1 on Chicagoland Sports Radio. Tell them, D. That's right, Davis. If you want to get the best sports talk right here in Chicago, hey, check out the D and Davis Show. Every Sunday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. on ChicagolandSportsRadio.com. We're talking about the Bulls, Bears, Blackhawks, White Sox, Cubbies, national, local, whatever. And give us a call, 312-564-7375. Got to check out the D and Davis Show. Every Sunday, once again, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Chicagoland Sports Radio. Com. But if you want some reason and some rationale with a little bit of me head, then make sure you tune in to the D and Davis radio shows. It's D and Davis, the best. She's the handy woman because she just keeps serving up the aces. This fall, check out DePaul University Women's Volleyball on ChicagolandSportsRadio.com. Bike down, boom, goes Conrad again. The Blue Demons try to move their way to the top of the Big East. Knocking it down with authority. Pete Ferrari has the call of all the action from the DePaul University campus. Down low, and he got an ace. No better way. Ace is the place. DePaul Women's Volleyball, all season long, only on ChicagolandSportsRadio.com. ChicagolandSportsRadio.com is the new home for DePaul University Volleyball. She's the handy woman because she just keeps serving up the aces. Pete Ferrari and Kyle Griffin bring you every serve, bump, set, and spike for the Blue Demons. New Blue, DePaul University Volleyball on ChicagolandSportsRadio.com. ChicagolandSportsRadio.com is your home for DePaul Volleyball. Catch all Blue Demon home games and select road games right here on ChicagolandSportsRadio.com. It's not just sports, it's a way of life. Chicagoland Sports Radio is proud to be the new home of the DePaul Blue Demons volleyball team. And you can hear it all right here. Brings it down in the middle of the court with no regard for human dignity. Pete Freire calls every serve, bump, set, and spike. Catch all the home games and select road games right here on Chicagoland Sports Radio. Two-hand roof, and with this roof, I bring you victory. DePaul Volleyball, new blue on ChicagolandSportsRadio.com. First rule of Fight Club is... You do not talk about fight club. Yo, this is K-Dub, one-fourth of the Game Time Radio crew. Yo, this is D. Jones. You want to hear about your favorite game? You want to hear about a new old game, anything? Tune in as we talk about all video gaming. Sports. There's no crying in baseball. And other topics of craziness Wednesdays from 6 to 8 p.m. on ChicagolandSportsRadio.com. Second rule of fight club is you do not talk about fight club. Game on radio. What's up, Chicago? It's Rufio. Are you looking to get hands-on training for a career in radio or TV? Just do what I did and go to the Illinois Center for Broadcasting. Whether you're looking to be on air or behind the scenes, the Illinois Center for Broadcasting is for you. As a graduate of ICB, I was placed in an internship with KISS FM, and now I'm on the air. You can do the same. Enroll now and start your career in just one year. For more info, go to beonair.com slash career. That's B. On air.com slash career. Hey Chicago, it's Rufio here. People always ask me how I got my start in radio, and I tell them, I'm an Illinois Center for Broadcasting graduate. With the on-air and behind-the-scenes training I received, I was able to be placed in an internship at KISS FM, and now I'm on the air. Classes meet three times a week, day or night, and in just one year, you'll be on your way to a career in radio or TV. So go to B on air.com slash career for more information don't wait enroll now at b on air.com slash career what's up everybody it's rufio if you're looking for a career in radio or tv or entertainment then do what i did and go to the illinois center for broadcasting they offer on air and behind the scenes training with day and night classes check out the website at b on air.com slash career or text career to 33239 for more info take it from me and text career right now to 33239 and you'll be on your way to a new profession in just one year hey chicago what's going on it's rufio and i have a question for you do you think you have what it takes to work in tv or radio 
If you do, then check this out. The Illinois Center for Broadcasting is where you get hands-on experience and behind-the-scenes training from the industry's top professionals. The Illinois Center for Broadcasting gave me the tools for a career in radio, and they could do the same for you. For more information, go to beonair.com slash career. Classes are just three days a week, so enroll now at beonair.com slash career. Hello? Wake up, man. It's time for Mayhem every Saturday now from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. on ChicagolandSportsRadio.com. We not on Tuesdays no more? No, Casimo. We are on every Saturday from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. on ChicagolandSportsRadio.com, where I'm your host, Zachary Roach. And I'm your producer and co-host, Casimo Godfrey. Where we talk the latest sports stories and all other type of mayhem that you will find on ChicagolandSportsRadio.com. Every Saturday, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Say it one more time. Every Saturday, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. This is Mayhem on ChicagolandSportsRadio.com. Get some. Throw the satellite up on top of your trailer. You just, you <laughs> just open up the floodgates, too. <laughs> I guarantee you he's listening and calling. You called down the thunder. Well, now you got it. Here comes 16 NASCAR calls. What you think about that loose left-hand turn by the 88 Doritos car? What an ugly thing to say. Well, right after I got done banging my sister. Just like a young man coming in for a quickie. I feel... So unsatisfied. You can hear it all Mondays 6 to 8 on ChicagolandSportsRadio.com. This is Chicago Sports Fix. Hey friends, this is Tom Waddle. You may know me as good old number 87 or as the better half of the Waddle and Sylvie show. People often ask me, hey Tom, how could you be so slow and make it in football? Well, I ignore that question and then they ask Tom... How can I be on radio and TV like you? I tell them it takes drive and determination, and you need to learn how it all works. At the Illinois Center for Broadcasting in Lombard, you can do just that. ICB is enrolling students for day and evening classes right now. You can learn how to be a sports talk show host, a producer, do play-by-play or shoot and edit video. Plus, you'll have a chance to get internships where you can tap into the knowledge of industry pros. They have affordable tuition and financial aid for those who qualify. And with job placement assistance, you can start your new career in less than a year. Go to beonair.com slash Chicago Sports. See what the Illinois Illinois Center for Broadcasting has hey to offer. This is Dr. Visit Pete, ICB regional today. program director for SportstownChicago.com. And let me tell you, I did the Team Dow Wellness Weight Loss Release Program, and it was absolutely amazing. I lost almost 60 pounds and over 10 pant sizes. It is absolutely amazing. And how did I do this? A month on, month off. That's my favorite thing about the program is you don't have to worry about doing this six months in a row. You do it for a month. You take a break. You maintain that weight throughout that next month, and then you jump right back on if you want to continue some more weight releasing if that is what you're going for. Why would I recommend it? I mean, absolutely no reason not to do it. This is a nice, easy, efficient, and healthy way to lose weight for you and for everybody you know. And what it meant to me, well, it helped me be the person I want to be. A lot more confidence across the board. Make sure you check it out, the Team Down Wellness information. Check out for more information on SportstownChicago.com. Ooh, ChicagolandSportsRadio.com is now the home of Loyola University men's and women's soccer for each and every goal scored by the Ramblers this fall. Tune into ChicagolandSportsRadio.com for the live broadcast and all the free downloadable games and podcasts. ChicagolandSportsRadio.com. It's not just sports. It's a way of life. Over here at jamsonair.com, we play anything and everything. You might hear. Or how about this tasty track? <laughs> we have them all. Well, maybe not that. Jamsonair.com. Radio when you want it. 
You love sports, you have drive and determination, but you need skills to work in sports broadcasting. Hey, this is Tom Waddle, and I'm here to tell you how to get those skills at the Illinois Center for Broadcasting. Get hands-on training for a career in radio, TV, or digital media. Learn to be a host, producer, or shoot and edit video. With internships, day and night classes, affordable tuition, and job placement assistance, you can start a new career in less than a year at the Illinois Center for Broadcasting. Go to beonair.com slash Chicago Sports to put the ball in play. That's beonair.com slash Chicago Sports. Hey friends, this is Tom Waddle. You may know me as good old number 87 or as the better half of the Waddle and Sylvie show. People often ask me, hey Tom, how could you be so slow and make it in football? Well, I ignore that question and then they ask, Tom, how can I be on radio and TV like you? I tell them it takes drive and determination and you need to learn how it all works. At the Illinois Center for Broadcasting in Lombard, you can do just that. ICB is enrolling students for day and evening classes right now. You can learn how to be a sports talk show host, a producer, do play-by-play -play or shoot and edit video. Plus, you'll have a chance to get internships where you can tap into the knowledge of industry pros. They have affordable tuition and financial aid for those who qualify. And with job placement assistance, you can start your new career in less than a year. Go to beonair.com slash Chicago Sports. See what the Illinois Illinois Center for Broadcasting has to offer. Visit ICB today. Be on air.com slash Chicago Sports. The Illinois Center for Broadcasting, with hands-on training and face-to-face -face industry networking, has helped launch several great broadcasting careers. Illinois Center for Broadcasting graduate, Jarrell Jernigan. At ICB, the most important lesson that I learned was that you get what you put into it. The days that you're at school, you have class for only four hours, and that doesn't do any justice. You actually have to put forward the time, grab an internship. You can't learn anything unless you're actually there at a real station learning what goes on. I'm currently at Cumulus Broadcasting, currently part-time helping out with anything between promotions to production to even on air at times and I couldn't have done that without the help of ICB and without an internship from Cumulus Broadcasting 97 is okay. You just heard it firsthand, so now it's your turn. Call the Illinois Center for Broadcasting at 630-916-1700 to schedule a campus tour. That's 630-916-1700 or visit beonair.com that's beonair.com the Illinois Center for Broadcasting where broadcasting careers begin. In Illinois, more than 300,000 students compete in interscholastic programs taking place in classrooms, auditoriums, gymnasiums, city parks, and stadiums. Students with extracurricular activities tend to have higher grade point averages, better attendance, lower dropout rates, and fewer discipline problems. IHSA sponsors 35 programs that enrich the educational experience and shape the lives of young people in a positive way. Support the schools, teachers, coaches, sponsors, and students who take part in activities sponsored by the Illinois High School Association. SportstownChicago.com brings you the inside information and winning strategies from the top coaches in the state of Illinois for high school sports in their web video series, The Coach's Corner. Hear about how the coaches and players of the elite teams in the state practice in the offseason, stories that inspire them to achieve, pregame rituals, superstitions, and much more. Find out how the best of the best are the best with the Sportstown Chicago Coaches Corner. Only on Sports SportstownChicago.com in a league of our own. My name is Rod, and I like to party. And we're Friday Night Hoops, your home for everything high school basketball. We're talking Richards, St. Rita, Lockport, Glenbard East, Glenbard West, Neuqua Valley. You want high school basketball? We got high school basketball, and we like to party. No, I'm the only one who parties. I'm pretty sure I've partied before. No, Kevin, I know for a fact you don't party, okay? You do not party. You're right. Friday Night Hoops. We get the party started on SportstownChicago.com. Oh, my God. Shut up, okay? Welcome back here on SportstownChicago.com. Back here for the second half between Marine Valley and Prairie State. Ryan Faye, Landon Woods here on SportstownChicago and ChicagoLandSportsRadio.com as we get the second half underway. Marine Valley leads 25 223 as we start the ball here. Moraine Valley starting off here for the second half. Stephanie Carlin on top of the key. And trying to go inside. Stolen away though by Merriweather. Merriweather all along giving it up now. And up for the left side layup. And good is Nigel Dixon. Dixon. Amanda Pierce. Ball now. It's 25 all. 19-23 left to go here in the second half. Ball now up to Stephanie Carl. Right, as we see on this second half, but they got Amanda Pierce in there with Danielle Sanders. Stolen away by Merriweather. She's playing the baseline, manages to stay inbounds. Turnover there for Moraine Valley as 
Prairie State trying to get the lead here early here in the second half. Driving inside, Amanda Pierce right side off the glass and in. That is exactly what they're going to have to do to take control of this game. They're going to have to utilize their height and drive the ball down the basket. Down trying the to steal up, stolen ball. away though by Merriweather again. Quick start for Prairie State. Dixon, layup, and is fouled. It won't go to the line for two shots. Fouled by Prairie State and Shaneka Boyd, the 5'8 forward from Rich South High School. You know, as they go to the line, let's see how many free throws uh, Prairie, Prairie State can knock down. If they can get into a nice rhythm with free throws and um, they can utilize their big girls, they're going to be in great shape the rest of the way. Yeah, free throw was an issue for Moraine Valley in the first half, seeing if they can unride it here in the second half. Prairie State now at the line. And number 22, Nigel Dixon, the 5'6 guard from Joliet Central High School. That's one free throw made. And Let's see how consistent they can go. Checking back in now is Kelly Foley for Katie McGann. As Dixon now goes to the line to shoot her second free throw as they are up 3, 28-25. And missing and rebound by Marine Valley and Stephanie Carl. So that's one and one on the second half, starting with their free throws. Foley gives it back out to Carl at half court. In it back down to Foley, a passing game between Foley and Carl. Carl top of the key, trying to look inside, dribbles around. Trying to find somewhere to go with it, gives it off to Dent at the left wing. Back up to Carl top of the key, thought about the three, gives it off to Foley. And she lost control of the ball. She was trying to grab it, not happy with herself is Kelly Foley. Ball now in the hands of Prairie State. And we're going to have a quick timeout here. So Landon, breaking down. The first half, real quickly, just to sum it up here, what did you see in the first half, and what do you want to see in the second half? Well, you know, what I saw in the first half, I saw the Cyclones, they were they were out and running in the beginning of the game. They were taking good control of Prairie State. But then, as uh, Jeff Boyd started to play with his lineup a little bit and insert Amanda Pierce in that lineup, they got into a nice rhythm. So it, I, I would say, again, as I've been stressing about this game, they need to continue on going towards Pierce to make a difference in this game. 28-25 here. Prairie State here over Marine Valley. We are here at Marine Valley for some great college basketball. We've had a great game here so far. And coming up after this, we're going to have the boys squad going at it between Prairie State and Marine Valley. Quick bats here about the teams here. Marine Valley ladies, 16 and 11 overall, 6 and 6 in the Illinois Skyway Collegiate Conference. And Prairie State, a conference rival, 18 and 8 overall. And an impressive 11 and 1 record in conference. You know, Ryan, I tell you, I was at the game last week. Moraine Valley men's basketball. You calling them boys. I'm going to call them men because they played like men last weekend. Last week, I tell you, that character Ward, he was very impressive in his, in his, in his play. Uh, they had great play by their guards. They had great uh, ball movement. They kept everybody fresh on, on, on the court. And they play good ball. Let's see if they can continue and do what they did last week against Elgin. Let's see if they can do it this week against Prairie State. And on the men's side, Moraine Valley 23 and 5 overall, 16 and 2 in conference. Prairie State men's 17 and 11, 7 5 in conference. Getting back now to the ladies' action as Merriweather will bring it up now for Prairie State off the timeout. 28 25, they lead over Moraine Valley. 18 20 left to go here in the second half. Prairie State must work inside out. They must go inside first, then out in order to take control of this game. Merriweather right wing thought about the three because it's inside now to Zandra. Zandra, nice pass to Miranda Pierce. And misses the layup, get, not getting the unfriendly roll, and she is fouled going up off the offensive rebound and the putback foul there on Moraine Valley and Shanika Boyd. You know, Ryan, what's, what's amazing is, yes, she missed that shot, but she was able to jump back and grab her rebound and go back to get fouled. Hey, this young lady, she's tough. She's, she's got what it takes to carry this team. Pierce now at the first of her two free throws, making it now 29-25. Four-point lead now for the pioneers of Prairie State. Again, we're here live on Sports on Chicago and Chicagoland Sports Radio.com. Ryan Faye alongside Landon Woodard on the call as Pierce makes the second free throw, making it 30 to 25. Five point lead now for the pioneers as Kelly Fuller bringing it up right side, dribbles back out, gives it back out to Dent now at about half court. You know, what's, you know what's amazing, Ryan? Most people that play ball uh, that, I, that I remember as Pierce is always have a great shot. And Nemec, that's Nemec driving baseline, left side up and is gonna be fouled there by Shatera Jones, the 5'8 forward from East Chicago Central High School in Indiana. Yeah, you know, it's crazy. As I was saying about the Pierce, it's Ricky Pierce, and then you think about the Pierce that plays for Boston. Paul. You know, Paul Pierce, you know, and this young lady out here, Amanda Pierce, got a nice smooth stroke. Is it just in the name Pierce? I wonder. <laughs> I don't know. My name's not Pierce, so I wouldn't know if I had the stroke of a Pierce basketball player. 
<laughs> as Nemec makes her first free throw and making her second now. So free throw shooting so far good for Moraine Valley as Merriweather bringing it up now for Prairie State. 17-44 left to go here in the second half. Dixon. Top of the key now up to Jones. Jones inside to Zandra. Zandra trying to find it inside the pier. Stolen away though by Moraine Valley and Shanika Boyd. And she is fouled by Prairie State and Amanda Pierce, the 6 1 center from Simeon High School. You know what's amazing? When Zandra has the ball that far down in the block, she just needs to turn and shoot. Don't continue passing that close up under the rim because she had a shot. You know, of course, Amanda's got the hot hand, but it can continue. You know, play your game. Play your game. Giving it up now to Boyd. Getting inside the Dent. Right side. Dent pulls up. Thought about the shot. Nope. Decides, to, decides for not to be blocked by Amanda Pierce. And that's going to be a five-second call against Moraine Valley and Renesha Dent, the 5'9 forward from Shepherd High School. Ball now goes to the Pioneers of Prairie State. Merriweather bringing it up the ball. Now 30-27. to 27. Prairie State 17-14 and counting left to go here in the second half. Dixon now top of the key. Getting inside to Zandra. Zandra. There you go. There you With go. With a nice floater from about eight feet and in. There you go. That's what I'm talking about. When Zandra is in that position, just play your game. Utilize your height. Turn and just simply shoot over that smaller player because they can't stop you. Stephanie Carr now trying to bring it in. And the ball overthrown, but somehow it went to Renee Dent. Thought about the three. But decides not to. Trying to find somewhere to go with the Stephanie Carr now. Out at the left wing towards the top of the key. Circling around now to Kelly Foley. Foley back to Carl. Carl pulls up, pops, locks, and almost drops. Rebound by Zandra and Prairie State. And that's going to be a foul against Shanika Boyd of Moraine Valley. You know, Ryan, I, I'm sitting here. I'm looking at the difference right now in this game. The tale of two different halves, Ryan. You know what's amazing? You know, Cyclones had the first half. Okay, and now we look at Prairie State. They're imposing their will on the Cyclones. Let's see if the Cyclones can muster up anything. But right now, they're just they're just too small playing against Prairie State. Look at Amanda Pierce, what she's doing. Here Speaking she of is. Amanda Pierce, driving to the left side, blocked away by Bridget Nemec. I think that was a foul. I, I didn't see any her getting up that, that high to block Amanda Pierce's shot. Ball will stay with Prairie State. 16-17 left to go here in the second half. 32-27 in favor of Prairie State. Kick ball as Dent stuck her leg out. Ball will stay with Prairie State, though. 16-14 now left to go here in the second half. Well, they did call it a foul, huh, Brian? Yes, they did. They did not call a foul. Corner of the ref, it was clean. But Pierce, though, retribution? Yep. That's nice floater up the center and in. 34-27, Prairie State. Pierce has 12 points in this game. Pierce gets over 20 points. The Dent game is over. Right, they sorry, win. Landon. Dent driving in right side. Stolen away, though, by Merriweather. Merriweather bringing it up to the left side. Bringing it out now to the top of the key. Thought about the three. He's off to Dixon's left wing. Merriweather now at the top of the perimeter. Going out to Dixon. Inside to Pierce. Pierce pulling up. Got it! From 15 feet and in. 36-27. Prairie State. A nine-point lead. The funny thing, as we view, Coach Boyd figured something out. He figured out that he had something that the Cyclones don't have, which is height, and he's using it. Foley, long three, and good! Kelly Foley from downtown, 36-30. That, that was a good shot. That was a good shot from the right side. And stolen away by Stephanie Carl now as the ball was bad towards her. Kelly Foley called for it. Oh, and she tried to stay within the layup and does nice. How about that? If, if you saw in our live stream here, Boyd tipped it off of, I believe that was Zandra's back, to herself, trying to keep it in bounds, but it hit off a Prairie State player ball. will stay now with Moraine Valley. Interesting play there as Katie McGann checks back in. Y you know, that was called a hustle play. <laughs> there is a time when you have to hustle. <laughs> and an inbound they are. steal there by Dixon. Dixon driving in. Center, right side layup, off the glass. No good, not even hitting the rim, wasn't even close. Foley now bringing it up for the Cyclones. So Foley with a nice spin move. Foley trying to drive around, goes nowhere with it. Stephanie Carl has it overthrown. That goes into the backcourt. Ball goes out of bounds. Pioneer basketball, 14.50 left to go here in the second half, 36-30 Prairie State. You know, Ryan, there's a time when you're running the break and you don't have enough people back to complete the break. That means you have to pull the ball back out and reset. Kathleen, sorry, Landon, Kathleen Smock checks in as Bridget Nemec goes to the bench. Continue. No, I'm just saying, you know, when you're on the break like that and you don't have enough people back to run it, 
pull it out and reset it. And <laughs> Shatera Jones knocks it down. Katie McGann did not see that one coming. 39 to 30. Prairie State back up to the ninth point lead. That's their biggest lead of the night. Biggest, not, biggest lead of the game. Aaron pass there by McGann. Ball out of bounds. Pioneer ball. Second half here landed all Prairie State. Yes. And they are capitalizing on Moraine Valley's turnovers and mistakes. And what size. An, and in size. What and an size. interesting start here for our first about six minutes here of the second half. Merriweather bringing it up the floor now for the Pioneers to Jones. Thought about the three going inside the Pierce, the Simeon alum. To Zandra, left side, no good. Rebound by Jones. Wow. They are quicker to the Mary ball. Merriweather, 18-footer, good. They're quicker to the ball, as we see. They're beating the, the Cyclones with quickness, with height, with hustle. And Moraine Valley just out of sync right now. Timeout, Moraine Valley, and they need one, and that's going to be a full timeout. We'll take it with them here on SportstownChicago.com. If you ever wanted a career in sports broadcasting, Matt Abaticola here for the Illinois Center for Broadcasting. Their 10-month program offers hands-on training in both radio and television. Learn on-air and behind-the-scenes skills just like I did at ICB. ICB's 10-month program offers internships, job placement, and financial aid for those who qualify. You can host sports shows, do play-by-play, -play, and color commentary of live games. For more information, text BE ON AIR to 46786. That's BE ON AIR to 46786. Or go to BEONAIR.com. Once again, that website is BEONAIR.com. SportstownChicago.com is the internet sports station that is located at the Illinois Center for Broadcasting in Lombard, Illinois. We offer you a chance, or should I say, an opportunity to become an on-air personality, get invited to live sporting events, and we teach you how to interact with your listeners. Get the training you need to get in the broadcasting industry. Just go to SportstownChicago.com or dial 630-916-1700. How to play tennis with a baseball bat. What the deuce? I'm Hulk Hogan. Did he used to play football when he was in high school? Yes, quite the female golfer. <laughs> Shut up! SportstownChicago.com. It's all fun and games. That beat's hitting us, so we're playing back. Welcome back here on SportsTownChicago.com and also on ChicagolandSportsRadio.com. Ryan Fay alongside me, my good friend Landon Woodard's here on the call from Moraine Valley College Basketball taking on Prairie State, the ladies of the Cyclones against the ladies of the Pioneers. 41-30, Prairie State leads with 14 away left to go here in the second half. Again, this is college basketball, so you have two 20-minute halves. You know, it's an interesting title, uh, well, name when you say Pioneers because it's fitting because they're – Laying the foundation. <laughs> Indeed they are, especially here in the second half. I know. Merriweather now thought about the three on the right wing, gives it back up to the top of the key with 13.48 left to go here in the second half. Zandra now with the ball here for the Pioneers. Back to Dixon. Dixon. And it's going to be a travel against Dixon. Ball now goes back to Moraine Valley. 13.42 left to go here in the second half. Well, with Prairie State up 11 points, let's see what the Cyclones are going to muster together. Stephanie Carr now gets the ball. For Marine Valley as they come off the full timeout, needing to talk things over as they're down 11. 13.36 up to go here in the second half. Having a hard time trying to get it over the court, trying to get it across, and they do. Dana Amon now checking back in now for the Cyclones of Marine Valley. Going cross court, inside pass, it goes, layup, and off the left side of the glass, and good is Kathleen Smock, the 5'10 forward from Stag High School. That was good ball movement because that was the only way they were going to beat that, that pressure, that defense. Zandra now on the inside, trying to drive and kicks it back out now to Dixon. Right wing, corner three, no, off the right side of the rim, and no good, wasn't even close. And trying to fly up the court, up, and the stop there by Kelly Foley has to dribble it back out because she was under the rim and could not, was unable to get the layup, though. But we're trying to see a lot of breakaway opportunities here from Marine Valley here in the second half. Did you see Jones? She was all into the defense, very aggressive, bodying up. McGann for three, almost trying to bake it in, and it goes off of Manda Pierce. And Prairie State ball will stay with the Cyclones of Moraine Valley. Yeah, Shantara Jones, she was bodying up and playing great defense on the left side here. Very aggressive, and that's exactly what Prairie State is doing. McGann inbounds it in. Defense. McGann inbounds it in the car. Foley top of the key. 4-3. Off the glass and no good. Rebound by Prairie State and Zandra. Bringing it up now is Nigel Dixon, the 5-6 guard from Joliet Central. Going inside to Amanda Pierce, and it is stolen away, though, by Kathleen Smock. And the ball dribbles away, though, 
to Katie McGann. So she will be officially credited with the steal is McGann as Stephanie Carr now bringing it up the floor for Moraine Valley, number four team. 12-17 left to go here in the second half. 41-32, Prairie State. And trying to find it inside to Kathleen Smock. Ball goes out of bounds. Prairie State ball, 12-11. It looks like the coach for and the a quick, Cyclone. quick substitution, Manny Green now checks in for Amanda Pierce to give her a rest. You know, Ryan, it looks like the coach for um, for the Cyclones have made a small adjustment. He's starting to double on Amanda Pierce to try to take the ball out of her hands. Now she's out of the game. Kendra Garnett also checks in now for Prairie State. Xandra has to hold it in. She does. Going back out to Merriweather. And the corner shot, no good. Rebound, offensive rebound, though, by Kawani Garnett. Garnett out of Dixon at the top of the key. As Prairie State resets now with 11.47 left to go here in the second half. Garnett now to Dixon. Left wing corner, no good, not even close. Rebound by Prairie State and Katie McGann. McGann trying to bring it up the floor. Gives it off now to Carl. Stephanie Carl now back to McGann, trying to find it inside the Catholic Sox. Stolen away, though, by Danielle Zandra. And she read that pass like a book. Merriweather bringing it up the floor now. Dixon, left side. Driving in, up and layup, no good, no foul called. Dixon, fade away, no good, too strong. McGann with the rebound. Katie McGann running the rebounds now for Moraine Valley these last couple possessions on defense. 41-32, still Prairie State. 11-12 left to go here in the second half. Foley now at the right wing. Back out to Carl at the top of the key, swinging it around at him again. Going cross court to Foley. Foley, long three, corner, good! And Kelly Foley filling it from outside. She is feeling it. She's starting to get her little stroke together, trying to pull her team back. They're down six points with 10.58 left to go. Amber Hunter now checks back in for Kathleen Smock. Amber Hunter's the six-foot center from Evergreen Park High School. And now Moraine Valley maybe trying to try to show a little bit of pressure here in the front court as they are now down 41-35 to Prairie State. 10.53 left to go here in the second half. They look like they're trying to slow down the Cyclones. I mean, the Prairie State. They're trying to slow them down. And uh, they're starting to be a little successful. Merriweather now takes the top of the key. Driving in the left side. Kicks it back out into the left corner. Throwing it cross court to Merriweather. She's thought about driving it, but kicks it back out to go down the top of the key. Swinging it around to Dixon left again. Now to Zandra. Two seconds on the shotgun. Zandra puts it up. And offensive rebound up and good. That was Mandy Green, the 5'8 forward from home with Flossmore. That was a good, that was a good save and a, and a good rebound to, to, to help increase the score. Carl now bringing it up the floor now for Moraine Valley. Swinging it to the left now to Katie McGann. McGann back to Carl, swinging it around. And trying to go inside, gets back up to Foley. Foley with McKenna having high with the three. Bad pass, stolen away though by Mandy Green. Back to Merriweather it goes. Dixon yeah. in the left wing corner. Back out to Garner, swinging it around to Merriweather at the right wing. Zantra inside and has it stolen away by Dana Hammett. You know, it's interesting. They really change the momentum. Everything about the game changes when the mayor, Amanda Pierce, is not on the court. Carl now on top of the key, trying to find it inside. Carl's got nowhere to go. Good defense here by Prairie State. Foley, right wing corner. Three. No good. Just a little bit strong. Rebound there by Prairie State and Nigel Dixon, the 5 6 guard. Foley has such a high arc on Throwing her. Throwing it shot. down court. 18 footer. Merriweather rims around and out goes out. And Amber Hunter with the aggressive rebound, throwing it out to Kelly Foley quickly. Wasn't really expecting that one. She has to turn around and wait for her players to get back here on offense. And she gives it off to Carl with 9-10 left to go here in the second half. These girls are getting mad. They're playing with a little tip on their shoulder now. Going inside to Hamid. Drives up and no good. And we got a foul against Prairie State. Looks like it's going to go against Danielle Zanjra. It amazes me to see that now the Cyclones are, are starting to get angry. They're like, ah, oh, we're losing. We got to do something. <laughs> and they're playing with a little more intensity. That's great. Hamad puts up the first free throw up and rims out. 43-35 Prairie State leads Moraine Valley with 9 3 left to go here in the second half as Amanda Pierce checks back in now for Danielle Zandra. Now, that's who I'm looking for. You know, hey, I like both teams, but I, when I see a special player on the court, I like to see them utilized. One thing I noticed. As Hamad makes the second free throw, another quick substitution here for Prairie State. And Moraine Valley as Bridget Nima comes in for Dana Hamid. And number 25 for the Pioneers, Shatara Jones, comes back in as well. You know, one thing I noticed and I learned from Tom Thibodeau, when you got a good player sometimes and they're hot, ride them. Don't sit them down. Full-size coach Tom Thibodeau you're talking about. We got another foul here on Moraine Valley. Looks like that's going to go against, I believe that looks like it will go against Bridget Nemec. 
That's actually going to go on Kendall uh, Amber Hunter, excuse me. And that'll be her second foul, team's fourth. And mounting in now baseline is Prairie State. Up seven with 8.55. Let's go in the second half. Almost stolen in off the inbound was Amber Hunter, but she loses control of the ball. Ball will stay with Prairie State. 8.54 left to play. Going now to Garnett. Going to Dixon. 19-footer up and air ball. As Jones gets the offensive rebound, anticipated that one. Floater in. Left side, no good. Pierce puts it back in off the tip in. 8.43 now and counting as Prairie State's up nine. This is fun. This is exciting. This is what we want. We want good basketball, and we have it here tonight. Carl to McGann. McGann back to Carl, top of the key, swinging around, thought about going to follow, but gets back to McGann. McGann feeling the stroke and misses just a little bit long. Rebound by Prairie State and Garnett. Garnett now crosses over Kelly Foley. And driving in left side is Dixon, too strong. McGann with the rebound, and that's going to be a bump foul against Dixon. And the ball now will go back to Moraine Valley. You know, as I continue to watch this game, it looks like Prairie State is starting to lose some of their momentum. And I'm going to tell you why. They're not going back into the post where they have an advantage. And if you're going to win this game, you have to use your strong points. Carl thought about the three at the top of the key from the pass from Foley. McG McGann now driving right wing. Gets it back out to Carl. Trying to swing it around. Goes off to Foley. Foley, double team. Gets it back out to Carl, top of the key. 7.54 now. Let's go here. Foley wants that three. And that's going to be a reach in foul against Prairie State. And that will go against the Pioneers. It looks like it will go against Kawani Garnett, I believe. Yep, and I got it right. McGann now swinging out to Foley. Foley. Right in corner three, knocks it in. You know, I was just saying, it looks <laughs> like the Cyclones is looking for her to get that three, Foley. And she's sitting over here on the right corner, preparing for the three. They gave her the opportunity, and she nailed it. Tawani Garrett brings it up. Drives inside the Pierce is fouled, and she will go to the line for two, as they are now only up six with 7.32 left to go here in the second half, 45-39. Hey, these, these ladies are out here. They're playing their heart out, you know, on this uh, special night. We have here tonight at the at the Moraine Valley Community College where they're honoring their coach. Delwyn Jones. Delwyn Jones. And, and I'll have the uh, privilege of, as Pierce makes the first video, I'll have the privilege of interviewing him for our SportsTimeChicago.com Coaches Corner. Oh, well, that is awesome. That's why I'm, in, uh, I'm a little uh, dressed up. That's why you are all occasion, jazzy. Yes. I see you. I got your tie on, your nice shirt. Yep. And Looking sharp. I think I always look sharp. But, you know, it's <laughs> nice to be acknowledged once in a while. Pierce yes, now sir. going up for the second free throw. Up and rims, in and out, rebound. Goes to Marine Valley and Keenan again. Oh, Katie. Trying, trying to use some fancy moves as she gives it off to Kelly Foley here at the right wing. Back to Carl, top of the key, trying to find it inside. Waiting for somebody to give it to. Gives it back out to Foley. Foley going cross court to McGann. Left wing corner three. It's good, but we're going to have an offensive Low foul. Count. It count. looks like that's going to go against Nemec. And it will. So the three point opportunity does not work in Moraine Valley's folder. That is the team's sixth foul, and that's crucial because now. Prairie State here for the next seven minutes to end the second half will be in the bonus. You know, I, I was just thinking about something. Uh, when I look at the teams, the two differences, they really have to utilize their strengths. And they Pierce just driving the right side, it. no foul call. Put up there by Mandy Green off the offensive rebound and in 48-39 now Prairie State, 6.57 left here in the second half. Still time for Moraine Valley to try to start a rally, though. That's true. But if they are to rally, they're going to have to go through Kelly Foley, and they're going to have to go through Katie McGann. Inside the smock, pass deflected. McGann, left side layup blocked away, though, by Amanda Pearson, Prairie State. Dixon bringing it up the floor now, three on two. Jones, er, right. Jones pulls up, no good, a little strong. Rebound there by Nemec. She had Trying to fly up the floor is Kelly Foley. Somehow saves the ball, and that's stolen from behind. Ball goes to Dixon of Prairie State. They need to settle the troops right now. They're getting a little bit out of hand, out of character. They're not playing uh, civilized ball. They're Pierce playing. inside to Mandy Green off the right side of the glass and in. 50 to 39, their biggest lead of the night. 11 points now as we have 6-10 to go here in the second half. And again, bad passes by Moraine Valley. The reasons, one of the main reasons why Prairie State has the 11-point lead. Foley, thought about the three, gives it up to Nemec at the right baseline. Along with their Going inside to, to Carl. Layup. Ooh, charging. And it's going to be a block foul, actually. looks like it's going to go against Prairie State and Amanda Pierce. Yeah, yeah. 
They, I'm sure she wasn't, she wasn't set. They were going to call that. They were going to call that. I tell you, uh, one of the things that, um, Amanda, they're going to have to continue to go through um, Kelly Foley and Katie McGann for Moraine Valley if they're going to get back into this game. They're down 11 points with 5.58 to go. As Carl makes the first free throw, now they're only down 10.50 to 40 with 5.58. Left here in the second half as Latoy Merriweather, excuse me, comes back in now for Prairie State, and she's been the big facilitator running the offense here for the Pioneers of Prairie State as Carl puts up the second free throw up and good. I think um, that the coach needs to start to put his team in that's going to close this game. And that's going to be a turnover. It looks like Shatara Jones stepped on the baseline. She was trying to bring it up off the right side. Ball goes out of bounds. And a timeout here. Prairie State calls a quick timeout. And a little confusion as we go into the timeout between Moraine Valley and a couple of the referees. So landed 50-41 here, Prairie State. What does Moraine Valley really need to do here to try to get back in this game as they're down nine with 536 left You know, here? Ryan, uh, as I was saying earlier, I think they need to go through Kelly Foley. She's got a nice jump shot, a nice three, and Katie McGann. If you're going to get back into this game and they're, they're being down nine points, I think that Moraine Valley need to utilize their scores because they're not big enough to challenge the Pioneers in the middle. Um, with Amanda Pierce and Danielle Zantra, these girls for the Pioneers, Prairie State are playing good ball the coach for Jeff Boyd really you need to close out with those two uh, twin tower ladies to make the difference in this game Again, we're here live on sportstownchicago.com and chicagolandsportsradio.com so we're having double duty if you will here calling the Moraine Valley College basketball here again we got the ladies here and then later on tonight we're gonna have the men's as Landon would like to refer them as men yes yes Moraine Valley Prairie State men's game coming up here in a little bit you know, last weekend, Moraine Valley scored 104 points, doubling up on Elgin, 104-57. to 57. Coming so in off see. the timeout, Moraine Valley has the ball. Stephanie Carl, top of the key, swinging it out now to McGann. Back to Carl. Carl thought about the three, but the shot clock went off. And a little confusion here as the scoreboard, uh, excuse me, at the scoreboard, the shot clock went off when it wasn't supposed to, and the clock is still running. So stoppage of play here for a scoreboard issue. Wow, that makes Shot clock wasn't supposed to go off, and that was the substitution sound that you just heard that went off, but it wasn't supposed to. And they finally stop it, even though it should not be 532. It should be around the 553 mark, I believe. You know what, Ryan? It makes me think about the Super Bowl. Remember when the Except home team started losing? And they were just losing because everybody was expecting. I don't think the, you know, here's the funny thing. If the power would have went out, we wouldn't be talking live right now. I know, I, I know, I know. It's just, just joking. We wouldn't be, what, you just joking. You wouldn't pull a Phil Sims and just talk for about half a ward and all of a sudden it cuts you off. <laughs> and then the power would go out here. And then being a 35-minute delay as the Super Bowl was in New Orleans. Makes it, give, give the players time to catch their breath. You know, it makes a little bit different. Fresh them up a little bit. And Give the horses a breather. A couple of Moraine Valley players go back to the coaches for just to recap the game plan as they play some music here just to entertain the crowd and Landon over here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love good music. The music mo gives you energy. It's nothing like good energy. And it appears they got the clock. So, uh, the clock on the top of the bat on the top of the basket we're looking at, though, it says 549, but the scoreboard says 541. I'm not sure if anybody notices this, but it's an eight, eight that's second an eight-second difference. Second difference. I don't yeah. know. There we go. Now it's check. Okay, the clock is going to be officially set as 5:41. So I was off on my prediction by 10 seconds. And and the head coach now for Moraine Valley, Delwyn Jones, is coming out just to maybe confirm everything. But and more confusion here as a couple of the Moraine Valley players are. Mad that they're probably not able to play because they want to get back to the action. As there's 25 seconds now put on the shot clock. And now all smiles from Delwyn Jones. And it looks like we're ready to get play underway once again off of our little scoreboard delay. Or as Landon would like to call it, our Super Bowl outage. <laughs> you know what's interesting? I would love to see um, Zantra back in the game. Getting it back now up to Carl, top of the key. Thought about the three. Driving right side, kicks it back out to Foley. 5.30 left to go here in the second half. Carl loses the possession. Turnover by Prairie State. Ball, it's a scramble. Jump ball is called. And they're going to call a jump ball. 
Ball will go to the possession of Prairie State. So 5.23 now left to go here in the second half. As it is 50-41 still, Prairie State in the lead. Let's see if um, Prairie State can continue on and open up this lead a little more, add some more points to the scoreboard. Shanika Boyd checks in now for Kathleen Smock. As Merriweather now will bring it up the floor. As Pierce goes inside left side, and we're going to have another jump ball call. And this time it will change possession. Moraine Valley with the ball now, down nine. 5-14 left here in the second half. You know, there was no way that she should have gotten tied up. Um, she should have just went right over the top of uh, Shanika Boyd. She's too small to be trying to guard Amanda Pierce. Amanda Pierce, 6-1. Shanika Boyd, it was 5-8. You know, she's just too small to be trying to guard her. Carl bringing it up the floor. McGann at the left wing. Back out to Carl, top of the key, trying to find it somewhere inside. Gets it back out to McGann. Now, Nemec ba playing baseline. Goes up, left side of the glass, and in. And count the basket, and the free throws coming up. Impressive move by Nemec. Getting to the basket along baseline. Very impressive. I'm, I, I was surprised she was able to beat um, Amanda Pierce to that spot. I didn't think she was that quick along the baseline, but she got it done. 50-43 now, five minutes left to go here. 501, I should say, left to go here in the second half as Danielle Zantra comes in as Amanda Pierce checks back down to the bench. I wanted to see her come in, but I don't want to see Amanda Pierce go out. I will. I, she would have to play the remainder and of the game. And misses the free throw, and that's going to dribble off of Zandra. Ball will stay with Moraine Valley. And the Cyclones now down seven, about 4.50 left to go here in the second half, trying to spark a rally. You know, all they need is for Kelly Foley or Katie McGain to get a, a, a jumper in the corner to get back in track. I think they're going to try to set them up. Carl now at the right wing, gets about to the McGain, top of the key. Foley, left wing corner, three, knocks it in and nails it down with authority. It's and now they're only down four. We got a game, folks. 4.42 left here in the second half. 50-46, Prairie State. You know, it's, it's, so, it's so amazing sitting back watching the game. And, and we're going to have a foul over. here on Moraine Valley. It was an over-the-back foul against Nemec, and that is going to be her fourth. Yeah, Ryan. Good stuff, huh? Well, yes, indeed it is. Again, <laughs> down four now, 4.37. This is, what, this is those games you love when it comes down to the wire. As Danielle Zandra will go to the line now as they are in the one-and-one one bonus because that is Moraine Valley's seventh team foul. Zandra goes up and makes a clutch free throw. You know, but they both have 17 fouls on both sides of the ball. So, you know, it's pretty even on that turn. But I tell you, um, it's a close game now. Zandra makes a second free throw as well. So a six-point lead now as Zandra makes two clutch free throws. Stephanie Cron now has the ball now for the Cyclones. And now dribbling up to Katie McGann, waiting for some players, though, to come back on offense to help her out. Carl, top of the key, trying to find somewhere to go with it. She does. McGann. Ryan. Back to Carl, swinging it out to Foley. To I, Carl. I think Foley and McGann are the ones that are supposed to be shooting in the last few shots of this game. They have the green light. Look at them. They're now moving. Nemec, nice move inside. And Put his block. block from behind. Boyd goes up, and she's fouled. And Hustle. she's going to go to the line now for two shots. Hustle. What hustle she displayed there. But I tell you, these young ladies are really balling. They're trying to get it done. And they're just hustling. So Shanika Boy now going to the line for two shots. Boy puts up the first shot and is good. So now they're only down five, 52-47. 410 left to go here in the second half. And here's Boyd, makes one dribble, puts up the second shot and is good. So the, the, foul, the free throw line issues from Moraine Valley solved temporarily as Moraine Valley now trying to apply some pressure here in the backcourt as they get it out to Merriweather at around the right side, trying to get the trap as Jones now through three, right wing, off the front of the rim, rebound Foley, here she comes, giving it up to Boyd, one on one with Merriweather, driving, left side, fouled, and is going to go to the line now for two shots. Ryan, look at the intensity. I'm starting to get goosebumps here. We see you, the were getting, you were getting goosebumps I'll when the tip-off started. I, <laughs> I tell you, this is amazing. I can't believe it's a four-point game with three minutes and 51 seconds remaining here. I, I, I didn't see it. I, I thought Moraine Valley would just run away with this game with their size. As we have a timeout here, charge to Prairie State, maybe to just talk things over. 3.51 left to go here in the second half. 
doesn't really get any better than this now, does it, Landon? No, no, Ryan. It doesn't get any better than this. I mean, we've seen a tale of two different halves. We've seen, you know, Cyclones get out in the first half and run away with it, so to speak. And then we saw Prairie State come back and impose their will on this game. And now it's kind of like tug of war. Who wants it better? Who wants it the most? And that's exactly what they're doing. They're going at it toe-to-toe -to -toe as if they're in a boxing match. This is exciting. And we're here live on SportstownChicago.com, also on ChicagolandSportsRadio.com. We're doing double duty here for both of our sister stations today. And when you do that, that means we got a big game going on tonight. We got the girls, right, the ladies right now, excuse me. I'll call them ladies. There I'll be go. proper about there it. There you go. And then later on tonight, we got the men's the going men's. at it. And that's going to be a great game. Men's basketball here from Rain Valley, 23-5 and five overall, 10-2. and two in the Illinois Skyway Collegiate Conference and Prairie State Conference rival, 17-11 and 7-5 and in conference play. Quick spot here on the ladies, the Cyclones 16-11, and 6-6 six and six in conference play, while Prairie State 18-8 and 11-1. And and we talked about this earlier, impressive in conference play, only having one loss. Yeah, they're balling. They're simply put, they are balling. I mean, I've seen some, some good play here last week, and I'm seeing great play again this week. So, you know, it just comes from being well coached and sticking to the system and playing hard. As long as they play team ball and play hard, you know, anything can happen. Shanika Boyd. Boyd now at the free throw line to shoot two free throws to put her team within one possession of the game. 3.51 left to go here in the first half as Boyd, her first free throw rims in and out. Got to regain her confidence now and just try to go for the second shot. You know, sometimes when the pressure's on, that rim looks very small. And it, she missed her second one, and Carl tried to save it, but the ball will go towards Prairie State. Two missed free throws. That were huge there for Moraine Valley. Yeah, I, I really know that feeling because, um, you know, sometimes the rim looks big when you're hot, and sometimes when you're cold, the rim just looks so small. It's hard to drop it in at that point. Dixon now going to bring it up left side, trying to find it to Jones. Setting the trap, Moraine Valley, unsuccessful. Merriweather has it up the floor, 338 left to go here in the second half. Dixon, left wing, and almost stolen away. Could have almost been a jump ball call as well. Yes. Merriweather now at the right wing, brings it back out. Jones top of the key. 325 now, let's go in the second half, 52 48 Prairie State. And Jones rattles it in, 54 48 now, Prairie State. And the Pioneers have the lead. Jones got a little bit of light going to the basket, and she created the rest of her space by being aggressive to the rim. Carl, back to Foley, now back to Carl, top of the key. Carl gives it back out to Foley. Foley thought about the three, gives it right back to Carl as playing a quick pass game. I think Foley's going to pull up with a shot. Did she get a clear look? Her or either McGann? McGann, three! And a little bit strong. Rebound by Boyd, though. Good, good aggressive rebound. And Ooh. she's going to be blocked away by Zanstra. Look at Boyd go up for that rebound. And Dixon's that flying block. down the court left side. And she's going to pull it back now with 247 left. And again, each possession counts now if you're Moraine Valley. Yeah, the pressure, the pressure's on. But I don't understand why Amanda Pierce isn't in the game with two minutes and 36 Blocked seconds. Blocked there by number 21, Rashia Dent. Carl now bringing it up the floor. 230 left. Carl, top of the key, trying to find somewhere to go with it. T clock's taking 18 seconds on the shot clock. Nemec swings it out. Foley, cross court as McGann barely stays in bounds. Foley, long three, still strong. Rebound goes off of number 41, Danielle Zandra. Ball will stay with Moraine Valley as a quick substitution as Landon. You wanted Amanda Pierce back in, you got it. I, you know what? The coach, is, the coach must goes be to the hearing bench. me. He must hear me because that lady, she needs to be on the court to end this game to make the difference if he wants to win. McGann inbounds and out of Carl. 2.10 left to go here. Now, the thing that I see, they Foley, have Foley now to, back to Carl. Foley and McGann are the ladies that's going to be shooting. Foley had the opportunity there, trying to go cross court with each other. Carl, trying to find someone to go with it. They Foley the pulls up. Right wing corner three. They knocks are it the in. Shooters. They are the shooters. Minute 50 to go here. 54-51 Prairie State. Minute 45. You know what, Ryan? I tell and you. And it's still oh, the by Nemec. Nemec's got to slow it down. And the Mar <laughs> Prairie State head coach, Jeff Boyd, not happy at all. He shouldn't be happy. And he throws the chair in anger. Foley. Back to Carl. Carl, wide open. Time to get three. Oh, just a little bit short. Boyd with the rebound. Look at Boyd. Get in there. Good. Can you believe this? Boyd. <laughs> 
5'8 is getting in there, grabbing rebounds over six foot one players. How can that be? They're supposed to be blocking out. 54 53. Prairie State's got the one point lead, and Nemec's going to be called for the block foul. This is incredible. And that's going to be her fifth. How do you let a 5'8 player get in there and grab the rebound over two six one players? There should be blocking out and making. You don't let that happen, and that's, that, may turn, that may determine the game. A one point game with a minute 12 left. This is incredible, Ryan. Indeed it is. Exciting. 54-53 Prairie State. Wow. Minute 12 left to go wow. here as Brittany, as uh, Bridget Nemec, excuse me, fouls out. What you, Amber Hunter comes back in. What are you thinking, Brittany Grinder? No, we're not watching them. No, <laughs> we're not doing them. She, had an, she actually had an impressive game last night yes, against she did. Uh, UConn yes, and Jim she Calhoun. Did. I saw that. I saw that. I was a witness to that. But I tell you. Shantara Jones down at the free throw line. Uh, puts it up and misses the free throw. Unbelievable. A clutch miss. McGann trying to bring it up. And that's going to be stolen. And the ball will be coming nearly at us. Hey. And it's going to stay with Moraine Valley. In order for Prairie State to win, they must close out on the shooters. Kelly Foley and Katie McGann. If they do not close out on the shooters, they will lose this game in which they had it in control. McGann inbounds it to Carl as we have about a minute to go here. 54-53, Prairie State with the one-point lead over the Cyclones. Carl, top of the key, gives it out to McGann. McGann Looking throwing it across court, trying to find Foley. Carl drives right side, goes up for the layup, gets a nice dive, misses though. McGann short on that layup. And the Pierce with the rebound, and Prairie State's going to try to hold it out. Ah, Full court pressure being set up here by... Moraine Valley, 40 seconds left, up one. Again, there's a shot clock, 20 seconds. So Moraine Valley does not have to foul. Huge. Merriweather now at the right wing. This Guarded is heavily huge. by Carl. Jones at the top of the key, Pierce inside. Trying to find Zandra. She does, layup, and one. Ooh, amazing. And this is shot great clock basketball. Turns off. This Sh is. Shot clock turns off, 27.4. 56-53, a three-point lead for Prairie State. And if you're Marine Valley, you'd probably have to call a timeout. Free throw, make or miss. This is girls basketball and she makes its it. finest. Timeout, Moraine Valley and head coach Delwyn Jones. 27.4 seconds. Shot clock is turned off. You know, that's a great timeout. Okay, now here's my question. Do you try to go for the easy two or do you try to go for the three with 27.4 to go? Well, if you get a clean shot, if you can get the ball in Katie Foley's hand or Katie McGann's hand and they got a clean shot, I would take the three. But if not, you take the quickest shots you can get. If it's a two-pointer, take that and go back and play good defense. Again, hey. we are here live on Sports Town Chicago and ChicagolandSportsRadio.com. Great coverage here of Moraine Valley and Prairie State women's and men's basketball. Men will be coming up in just a little bit. Oh, yeah. And oh, I'm liking yeah. the Cyclones jerseys here tonight. I oh, really yeah. am. They look like Cyclones with that type <laughs> of print on there, buddy. Yeah, That's and, uh, for sure. And Markel Pierce just gave me the weirdest look as I was saying that. <laughs> hey, but you know what? As, as J, uh, Jatine Shannon walks by, hey, this kid here, I'm looking for him to have a nice shot night tonight. Hopefully he can continue on with those threes that he laid out last and week. And they go back into the locker room for some pregame preparations because they either are going to be getting ready to start here in just a little bit or they might have to wait a little longer depending on the outcome of this game. Oh, yeah. And you know what? I don't think it's going to go into overtime, though. But it's, you know what? But if it does, hey, so the be more it. The more the merrier. 27.4 now. Moraine Valley has to inbound on the far side of where they got to go. And if they go into overtime, it's going to kind of delay your interview, buddy. That's quite all right. Yeah, I, I, I think everybody can wait. You got your notes ready? Oh, I'm ready. You got your questions? I was born ready. My man, let's go. <laughs> let's do it. Let's get it Inbound up. in and out. 27 seconds. Stephanie called. The, the trap being set here by Moraine Valley. Going up to the court is Boyd. 20 seconds now as the ball's picked away. It's Andrew with the steal. And Moraine Valley's got a foul. And no fouls Great. called. A scramble as Dixon recovers for the ball. Finally, a foul has been called. 12.7 seconds now as Prairie State is going to go to the line for the 1-1, one 57-53. One. They lead 12.7 seconds here in the second you half. You know what's interesting? Amber Hunt clearly fouled the Prairie uh, Pioneers basketball player. It was a clear foul. Nigel that Dixon wasn't now at the line. And, and now we are in the double bonus, so it's two free throw opportunities now for Prairie State, the Pioneers, as Nigel Dixon is at the line to shoot two. And we're going to have a timeout called by head coach Delwyn Jones of Moraine Valley. Uh, Again, 57-53. Prairie State leads by four, 12.7 seconds. They get 
two free throw shot opportunities. What a game we've had. Oh, and, exciting. And an exciting game we have had. And again, I get to I will have the privilege of interviewing both the men's and women's head coach here after the game. I will be interviewing the head coach of the men's as well, Dedrick Shannon, and the head coach of Moraine Valley's ladies, Delwyn Jones. So again, those will both be on the SportsCenterChicago.com's Coach's Corner. You will find it on our website, SportsCenterChicago.com, and then click on the Coach's Corner tab. Are you ready for your big night? Because you have a big night ahead. I of you. I do. Well, you do too. We got a, we got our men's game coming up here. Uh, this is only half the fun, ladies and gentlemen. Oh yeah. We got another game coming up here. We got the men going at it. Oh, Moraine yes. Valley Prairie State. You can't beat it. No, you can't beat it. And guess what? We have the best seat in the house. I mean, courtside. We get to see everything. We get to see the players come by and talk. Hey, we I've got a the couple best high school players too. Uh, Sean O'Mara from Bennett Academy just walked by. So checking out a college game himself. Oh, that kid looks like he's about 6'7", six, 6'8", six, huh? Uh, in the last, last game I did for Bennett well, was a while ago. I, believe, it, I believe he said 6'8". Yeah, so he's got to be. I'm looking six, at that eight, shoe yeah. size. He's looking like maybe a he's, 14. He's, there. he's bigger than me. I'll put it that way. Oh, yes. <laughs> Dixon now at the free throw line as we get back to the action off the Marine Valley timeout. Dixon puts up the first free throw, misses off the left side of the rim, and no good. 12.7 seconds. Two timeouts left here for Marine Valley and one for Prairie State. Second free throw up and good. 58-53, Moraine Valley's got to hurry. 12.7 seconds. Get it up to Foley. They go back. 10 seconds now. Going up to McGann. McGann got to put up a shot, and that's way blocked and goes behind the backboard. Ball will, though, stay with Moraine Valley as there's only 4.8 seconds left as they're down five. Yeah, you know the amazing thing, you know, once we were able to kind of size up the teams, you were able to find out who the scores were on both teams. Um, who they need to focus in on in terms of slowing down the teams for momentum. Uh, for the Cyclones, of course, it was Katie McCann and Kelly Foley. If you can slow them down, you can pretty much contain that team. And on the other half of the ball, for the Pioneers, Prairie State, you know, if you were able to control um, Amanda Pierce or Danielle Zanstra, you pretty much controlled them. Um, uh, Shatera Jones had a decent game as well. And uh, Latoya Merriweather, she really controlled the tempo by, by pushing the ball up court. 58-53, Prairie State looking like they will come away here on the road with the W. There's still 4.8 seconds left, but it's not looking good for Moraine Valley. Again, we are here on Sports Town Chicago and Chicagoland Sports Radio.com. Ryan Fahey alongside me, Landon Woodards. And we'll be sticking around here for the men's game, too. Oh, yes. We will don't be you, sticking don't around. Don't you worry. And then I will be, I have the privilege of interviewing both the men's and women's head coach here from Moraine Valley that will be on our Sports Town Chicago.com's Coach's Corner. And again, that's why we talked earlier about why I am dressed so spiffy for the occasion. Yeah, you are spiffy, man. You know, maybe you should interview more often because you look <laughs> sharp. <laughs> you oh, look I knew sharp. I looked sharp. I knew I looked sharp you anyway, look sharp. but you know, <laughs> thank you for the compliment. Yes, you know, it's interesting. We got 4.8 seconds remaining in this ball game, possibly, unless and something spectacular happens. Ball will go with Prairie State, though, off of the missed three by Katie McGann. And Daniel Zandra will inbound it now for Prairie State as they have about 4.8 seconds to go. Trying to heavily guard her out the inbound, and it's going to be stolen away. Pull up three. No good, though, by Maggie Yandel. Carl just puts up a deparation. No good. Game is over. So Prairie State holds off the Moraine Valley late rally here in the second half to pull off the 58-53 road victory here in Palos Hills. You know, it was a good game. And, um, you know, if, if a little more time was on that clock, who knows how this may have turned out because, you know, the Cyclones started to go get momentum. Uh, as late as it was in the game, they started to get momentum. And, um, you know, for some reason, Jeff Boyd was pulling out his best weapons off the court. And uh, that makes gives them an opportunity to, to do good. Hey, but we as we got the gentleman walking <laughs> by, you know, he was a player of the And they're all game loving Landon week. here, too. Oh, yeah, the guys, those guys, those guys are champs. I see it in them. They, Cyclone, they got good The good men's Cyclones movement. not coming out for warm-ups. Oh, yeah. Those boys, they had a, those men had a good game last All right, time. we will be back here for continuing coverage of the men's game between Moraine Valley and Prairie State. I have, to go, I have a couple assignments to do. We'll be back here on Sports on Chicago and Chicagoland Sports Radio.com in just a little bit. 
Broadcasting with hands-on training and face-to-face -face industry networking has helped launch several great broadcasting careers. Illinois Center for Broadcasting graduate Mike Kurtz. How did ICB help me? Let's just say this one simple thing. Take advantage of everything from studio time to everything that they have, all the equipment that's available to you. Go out, get your internship. This is what I did. I put everything in one pile, went out, got my internship, got hired on part-time before I even graduated ICB. Within two months after graduation, I was hired on full-time in the production department. Department. Guess what? Now I got the best of both worlds. Monday through Friday, it's production. Every Saturday night, I have my own show on air at 96.7 The Eagle. Classic rock. That really rocks. You just heard it firsthand, so now it's your turn. Call the Illinois Center for Broadcasting at 630-9... Hi. Hi, I'm with Sports Town Chicago. We're here at Moraine Valley Community College, and I have the player of the game with me. Uh, Amanda Pierce, and she had a great game. She was uh, aggressive on the rebounds, um, scoring at will, and pretty much controlled tempo. And I ask you, um, how did you find the game to come about? Was it easy for you to play that well, or you always, that's, that's your normal game? Well, you know what? I got a good team behind me, you know, good point guards passing me the ball, you know, doing what they're supposed to do on the court, and I just finished, just role play. You know, I was, I was sitting here once I saw the way that you was taking control of the game. When your coach kept pulling you out, I kept saying, leave her in, because I'm sure she could play, play longer. I, I mean, you had momentum. You were really imposing your will on this game, and I, and I was like, she's special. And, and on the other side of the ball, um, one of the people that really stood out was Kelly Foley and Katie McCain. At the end, they started making a run at you guys, at you ladies. And one of the things I was saying, in order for y'all to win, that you needed to focus on those two to contain them in order to pull it out. You feel the same way? Yeah, I do. You know, defense wins games. You know, we got to come out and do what we have to do on the defensive end and everything on the offensive end will just fall through. Well, you know what? I, I noticed that you all have somewhat of twin towers with yourself and Danielle Zanstra, and I was noticing how much taller you all were over them. And I was curious as to why he didn't really go into the post a little more to you two and then work outside. <clears throat> You know, he just tried to give everybody the opportunity to score. You know, when he feel it's time for the for the post to step up, he say, give him the ball, give him the ball, give him the ball. So, you know, it's just a team game. Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. Hey, I appreciate you stopping by. Good luck in your next game. Thanks for your time. Thank you. No problem. Dr. Pete from SportsTownChicago.com, and I'm also a remote DJ for Radio Disney AM 1300. And I want to ask you, do you want a career that you could love? Because if you do, I think you need to come check out the Illinois Center for Broadcasting and make your broadcasting career begin here. Go to 455 Eisenhower Lane South Suite 200 here in Lombard. Again, that website is beonair.com. Phone number 630-916-1700. Again, for a career in broadcasting that you and I and everybody can love, go to beonair.com. You love watching and talking about sports, so why not turn that passion into a career in sports broadcasting at the Illinois Center for Broadcasting? Hi, I'm Matt Abaticola from Sports Radio 670, The Score, Chicago's number one sports talk station. I wouldn't be where I'm at today without the time that I spent at the Illinois Center for Broadcasting. For more information, go to beonair.com forward slash Chicago Sports or text Chicago Sports to 33239. The Illinois Center for Broadcasting, where sports broadcasting careers begin. As the baseball season wears on, you may wonder what the manager of